What's up, everybody? Welcome. Welcome to the stream. <clears throat> Welcome to the YouTube video. Welcome to being welcome. Um, today I'm finishing up my work on the wall boss. Um, he's actually really a lot more fun already now that he's got this alternate form of attack, which can kind of get you from anywhere. And also, what I'm working on now is the last little touch where he has three different um, areas where he can be hurt. So you have to, you have to like, sometimes he's got all three of his, of his, basically his, his areas where he's weak. Sometimes he's got only the right side, sometimes only the left side. So I'm trying it out. See right there, he had only the left side. He ever closes his eyes, he's like invulnerable everywhere. There he is, he's invulnerable for a minute in the middle. Ah, one thing I gotta do here is to make it somehow really clear which one's um which one's active. Which ones are active. I wonder if I were to set it to be gray, or I mean, thanks dieharders, if say the left one didn't have a category, maybe it would be gray. Thanks Wolfrock. It's still red. Okay, I got an idea. If um, let's make them gray, the collision boxes. If they don't have a mask, I think that's in collision system. Yeah, so it's got this little collision debug sprite. Exit components are yellow. Empty components are gray. Okay, let's make it also empty. Basically, if e.collision.mask equals zero. Oh, this no wonder this doesn't work. If it has if it has K filter none, K filter none zero, there's no way to test for that bit. Duh. There we go. There we go. Okay, yeah, it was it was gray, now it's red. Okay, so for it to be red, all right, if um, e dot collision dot category equals zero, or it's an invalid pause. There we go. So there's three cases where it would have a gray box. This is going to be helpful for other debugging, I'm sure, at some point. 
some other entity along the way, I'll be like, oh, I'm glad I did that. Cool. So the left one's gray. To let's let's make them uh, a little bit further down so it's clear. Moving them down by seven pixels each, so they'll stick out a little bit, and we can clearly see which one's active. Oh, and also. It needs to start with category foe. Cool, so the right one's active. Oh, the right one needs an animation then. Now it was the left and now it's only the center. But he closed his eye again. Okay, when he does shield up, he needs to set all of his collisions to none. I don't think I have one yet where he's doing that. Okay, so shield up. Here's shield down. Here's shield up. Okay, so it's when it's shield up, it's gonna turn off all of his um What's up T? How you doing today, man? Okay, so this becomes none. Okay, so when he sets his shield up, he turns off all of his collision areas, just to make it clear. Okay, so I need a good animation for that right one. Okay, there was, he was open in the center. He's still open in the center only. Oh, because... Okay, so basically I just have to make his animations clear. That one, it'll stay in that it's gotta stay in that mode. Yeah, you're first, man. You're fine. That's good to hear. Right on, man. Okay, so starting with, um, I'll start with the center animation. Which one is that? Oh, it's attack. It's gas, which is actually attack center. All right, there we got it changed. Now, tag center. It does have a large delay already. Let's get all these these animations open. Sir, Rockupine, Fear Wall Attack. Oh, just barely got off the list. Fear Wall Attack. Is it here? In the... No, it's going to be in Sprites. No Shadow. Fear Boss. Fear Wall. Okay, all these attacks. Oh, Shazzle. Shadow. 
shift. All right. Okay, so the left and the right and the center. Let's see what the center... The center... Oh, that's why the center doesn't look right. It's because the center... The center needs to close it some. Close its eye all the way. Okay, and I want him to, when he does his attack center, let's go mode three. So he goes into mode three, which means he, when he's done with mode three, he does animate idle. Good. So that means that during mode two, or when he does this attack center, here it is. This needs to be an animate forever. So he just loops over and over doing this animation until he's done. Ah, oh, it delays too little. Let's do like at least a delay of three seconds. So three seconds until he's done with Oh, this is until he spawns. Yeah, all right, I don't want him to have too much delay there. Wait. Yeah, 0.8 seconds until he spawns the gas, but then a little more delay. So we'll make it so he has to have zero fear gas. He spawns the fear gas. And then he does a delay. And then he goes, if mode three, mode zero, He doesn't reset his idle until then. Spawn fear gas delay frequency screen shake. Yeah. Good. So we've got two separate parts of this. One where he spawns his fear gas. The next one where he's done and he stops his animation. So this should what this will do, it should do is make it so his animation always plays while he's doing this center attack for a while. And then as soon as his animation is done, it's clear and boom, he goes back to his regular mode. In fact, this is where he should have look, where he should reset all his targets. In fact, it would be nice if he just had a reset mode. I've got mode 88 and 8 already. Also mode 7. Okay, so when he's done with everything, maybe mode 10.
basically does everything in here except for this if target near. What's up, Balance Pita? Belzio. Welcome, welcome. Which means that shield down basically should just go if mode one, mode nine or ten or five. We'll go ten. Mode ten. So let's call this one secret once reset. And then this is if mode ten. Oh, and this one is also if modes if mode one if target near, take the shield down. We go to mode ten. If mode ten, we got shield zero. Reset all the targets. Animate open. Delay the animate and set mode zero. Okay, so now we've got something a mechanism to reset once he's done so like when he's done with the gas for example right here we can go mode 10. all right let's see if that works so we should do the gas and then he hangs on for a minute and then he goes into mode 10 and turns off his specific collision areas <laughs> on the right, it's on the left, that one needs to reset, let's see if the middle works though, come on do the middle, Nice, it worked. Okay, so let's see if that works for the bombs as well. So once the bombs are done, goes into mode 10. No need to animate idle, no need to reset. Oh, in fact, we should add this whole timer stuff to the end. Ah, uh, I think you need Franker faces. Okay, this is part's but debatable right here. Does it need to reset the timer for every one of these? Actually, we could do it like this. We could go succeed if timer is less than zero. Select one of these, do a sequence where we set the timer. There, now we've got gas and dropping bombs. Both of which go back into mode 10.
fight animation needs to be better. All right, so attack R. Whoops. What's up, Grim Gary? Yes, I've definitely rested from GDC. Oh, it's a nice feeling to have rested. Yeah. But now we got PAX East coming up this weekend. So not gonna be much rest until after this next weekend. This weekend's gonna this weekend's gonna be a lot of work. Like Monday, Tuesday, no, I mean uh Friday, all of Friday, all of Saturday, and all of Sunday are all gonna be just full of demoing, talking to people, um, interviews and stuff. Like, it's going to be crazy. Oh, you'll be out. You're out there. Nice, man. Yeah, I'll be in Boston this weekend. Yeah. PAX East. We'll be part of the Indie Mega Booth. That's pretty cool, right? Yeah, well, let's hope it's not completely, but yeah, I, I'm expecting it to be. So if I do get some rest during PAX East, like, it'll be amazing. It'll be a miracle. I'm looking forward to it, though. I'm looking forward to showing the game to um, to everybody that wants to see it. You know, this is a pretty awesome opportunity to be a part of this. Like, to be, you know, part of the events that I got to be at at GDC, and now part of this Indie Mega Booth at PAX. I'm really grateful. I'm humbled. Oh, it's okay. So he's not doing his animation for the second one there. Yeah. Nice. That would be cool. Yeah, attending. I definitely recommend it. If you've never, like, for example, I I always I had never actually gone to the GDC Expo before. I've been to GDC like several times, like just around it going to parties at night, but I had never actually been inside and gone to the event. And because it was like a few hundred bucks, right? I was like, ah, I can't afford that. I'm not going to go to GDC and just spend $200 just browsing around the expo, looking at other games and stuff like that. But I'll tell you that like $200 was totally worth it. I learned so much stuff about the games industry and what's going on currently and what's cool in the games industry right now, stuff like that. Just by being at the expo, it taught me a lot. So I would, yeah, if you're serious about getting your games out there and like you want to actually have a presence, you want your games to be, you know, games of note, you want to, you know, we want to do it right. Like there's a lot of value you can get out of just being at the expo and like looking at other games and seeing how how the cool games, in your opinion, are doing it. You know what I mean? So anyways, I recommend it. All right, so here's this other attack where he, got, he, goes, um, he goes animate attack right. Okay. 
Okay, so he needs a special mode. He needs like mode four. And a delay of a little while or something. Actually, we could just go straight to mode 10, probably. Yeah, so stick in mode three for a minute. Oh, let's do two seconds there. So if you just joined the stream, what I'm working on is um, making it so the wall boss has three areas of vulnerability that cycle. So it should make this boss fight a lot more interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that's totally true, Teak. But you've got a lot of events there in Europe which you can go to instead. Um, what are There's uh, Rezd. There's like... Um, there's events in Berlin. What's that one in Berlin? There's there's plenty of events in Europe you can go to. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you got to finish a project, right? Yeah, you got to you got to move yourself to that point where it where it actually makes sense to spend money on going to the events like this, you know? Yeah. Oh, we're already running. Okay, let's see if this works. It should be open. Oh, he didn't do his animation right. Okay, what's up with the animation? Attack right. Fear. Oh, the problem is this. It needs to be longer. Anything else? He sets his targets. Animates, spawns, does a sound. Goes into mode 10, then delays. Mode 10 should kind of be one of a higher priority, actually. Let's move this up. Uh, no, this is not a new boss. Um, this boss has been around since the summertime of last year. Yeah, I'm just finally getting to the point where I'm making him good. Before he was kind of like a rough sketch and there were a lot of big issues with this boss. The biggest issue was that he just closed his eyes when you went to the side and he just did nothing. So um, so now he, uh, he's got these three areas of vulnerability, multiple kinds of attacks, and he pushes you back an area. So once you get down to the bottom here, he pushes you down to the next area. So it's all in all, it should be a lot more interesting of a boss fight. Make that a little longer. Where is that? Here we go. Delay four seconds. Let's, I just want to see if that works. You might have. You might have killed this guy really quick. It used to be a lot easier. Second attack. It's not happening yet. Do your second attack. That's the third attack. Do the second one. He just doesn't care. He's like, ah, I'm not gonna do the second attack.
was quite odd. That whole time he didn't do his second attack. Come on, man, do it. I didn't. What's uh, what's wrong with this? Why did that not? Here, we'll make this really happen, like, no matter what. to do is um, animate attack right forever and not overridable all of these need to be forever they're all gonna get overridden I train your wall monster <laughs> nice one man how have you been dude what's been new what's new in Grim Gary's world Okay, that's looking good. Now we can turn back on these two things. Nice, all your free time. Sweet, dude. That's awesome. What part are you working on right now? part is it's kind of confusing when his eyes are half open Ooh, attaching parts together, cool. Oh, oh, nice. Sounds fun. Oh, this is good, this half-closed copy is a lot better than
Nice, dude. Cool, I like these trails. It's a cool nebula, too. I like your ship design, too. These wings. Nice, look at that. 60 frames a second, too. Nice, Gary. Yeah, man. Okay, hopefully this is all that needs to be done to clarify the animations so that it's really clear which eye, which, which attack zone is open. Like, yeah, there, it's really clear that it's the right. Now it's this one. Now that, it's, now that it's working really well, um, I want to try it out. I think I'm going to make these side ones a little more narrow. So the left and the right ones are, you have to really get over near that side for it to work. I'll do another scan beam. What's up, baby? Okay, so we're gonna have two scan entities. One is scanner, the other one is scanner. Actually, we'll just call these scanner L and scanner R. Yeah, just need that. Yeah, 
Yeah, it felt really weird without that. So if it, if you don't have a lock in a certain attack direction, and you can just switch uh, directions willy nilly, it um, first of all, it feels um like cheating because it, especially with a with a controller and you got your joystick or whatever controls, like you start attacking in one direction and then you can change direction during the attack. That's just it. It feels too powerful. It's like it does. It's not meant to be. You know, it doesn't feel natural when you're attacking. It's when you're attacking. You sort of have momentum, so it's giving you the feeling of having momentum by stopping your attack direction, allowing you to kind of stay in that certain direction. If you start pressing another direction during the middle of your attack, he does start moving in that direction, but he has to build up his momentum again. You sometimes forget to stop a turn. So does that feel unnatural for you the way it is? So now we got a scanner L and R. Let's change this one to a little higher. Uh, now he's got something we need to change this one to scanner L. And we can make um, the left sequence also do a special scanner, but this time with R. just back to back doing all his attacks oh yeah oh okay Okay, so I need another mode. This is when he spawns an enemy. He's going to go into a, mo a mode where... Oh, it's already... Wait. Oh, it might be this. Oh, wait, wait, no. Gas? Gas done? Oh, I think I added the wrong... Reset. There. Reset needs... Oh, reset is a thing that needs this stuff. If your timer is less than zero, it basically gives it a timer. And there's no need, more need for this gas done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. That's good. I'm glad you I'm glad you get to the point where you're not thinking. That's kind of one of the points of Songbringer is not to not to think to to like just go wild and to be berserk like that. To follow your heart instead of your head. Okay, let's see if the timers work a little better now. Oh wait, this is if succeed count seer spawn seer. So there now we can do this right attack without having to spawn an enemy. Okay, 
so that scan thing needs to come a little bit farther to the right and a little bit more north. More like 76 and 34. Okay, a little lower, a little more to the right. Ah, cool, just a couple more pixels. Pixels too much. Forgot about that, Z orders. There, that looks nice. Okay, a little too much delay. Delay 4.0, this should be more like little too much timer going on. He's not attacking quite enough. But that can be adjusted. Um, okay, the next thing to do is to try this out with... Um, Turn off this render verbosity and try this out without any debug data to see if it feels right, if his eyes open and close and everything seems right, plays right.
no, what happened? Oh, the boss is still here? It's like the boss just like either got warped. Oh, there he is. He's there somewhere. It's like he's stuck. Can't get through here. Oh, he's there now. He's just invisible. Oh, dude, what the hell happened there? Oh, he did. He stayed. He's like, ah. Oh. I'm going, I'm staying here. I'm not going to let you through, though. Ah, oh, damn it. Ah, oh, there's still some critical bugs with this guy. Well, okay. First thing to do is I'm going to check this in so far because it's a lot of awesomeness with how this is all set up with these three areas of, of vulnerability. Oh, attack center is messed up. How could he just get all invisible like that? That was weird. Might have to do with some entity deleting him or he deleted himself. Okay, I'm gonna check in the fear boss and all the fear boss art. And then we'll get on to this other little bit of code. I was writing before the stream about cleaning up entities. This probably has to do with why the boss didn't transition properly that first time there. All right, raw and data, we're checking in. Cool. Now what's left is this bit of code. All right, so I was getting a crash before the stream by just allowing allowing the wall to push me back into the next room. And then right as the scanner beam starts, you step across the line and it'll crash. Hmm. 
and see if it still crashes. did it right afterwards we need more health for this too this will really help Okay, what I'm trying to do here is get get this scanner beam to happen right as I cross the line between the two areas and confirm whether this uh, is a bug. Where is it going? Go. Yes. Okay, it's still a bug. All right, this is really good to know. I need to figure out why this is a bug and fix it. Okay, so we've confirmed that it still is a bug. Something to do with destroying entities. Something to do with the scanner beam too, because it only happens when your scanner beam is out and then later you go and try and destroy an entity Oh, this is being called from areas delete entities. So something, something is already. Something has already deleted this entity. And it must have been when it was it was a child of another entity. It's gotta be it. So let's, go, let's look at the scan beam, where it actually does this whole scanner beam thing. So Anim's scan goes from the source EID to the destination EID. The source EID, oh, is that empty scanner beam thing. The destination EID is like the player, the hero. And it goes and it's always oh, schedules before tick and then creates all these scan beams and then does a scan or a delete entity
Ah, here it is. Okay, so there's the problem. It's um what's happening is it's set um a, a parent for the beam. There's like oh there's like ten or twelve or whatever. There's a bunch of rays, and all of these rays get created, and their parent is the beam. So they shouldn't be part of the area's entities. Okay, so uh, this is a, this system. The way this works is is kind of um, fragile. This uh, it creates all these. Well, the, the way it does it is like if a if an entity is a child of another entity, it will be removed whenever the parent entity is removed. And the issue that's happening here, it's not actually a crash. It's just an assertion warning that basically. Um, it's the entity has already been removed once because it was a child of another entity and now it's trying to remove it again when the area is destroyed and it's deleting all the areas entities so there needs to be a more rock solid way to do this like an entity It either needs to Yeah, I could throw away the child before the exception or whatever. But I'm trying to do that. I'm trying to do this in the most like the most future proof way. You know, like I wanted to. Yeah, I want to do this before it can in, in a way that, that it will just kind of like solve everything. You know, this is a very fundamental thing I'm trying to modify here. Um, deleting entities is really important to get right. So I want to make, I want to make this just kind of work no matter what. One option would be to just make it so it, it like ignores the entity. It doesn't delete the entity if it already has deleted it. So if you're a child of another entity and then later you try and go delete yourself. Let's go to that destroy now function. So just to illustrate this, this is what's going on. It's deleting the entity there, and then lay in one of in the, as a child of another entity, and then it's going and deleting the entity. So really, I guess it would fix it if I did something as simple as this. If entity exists, id entity destroy now.
And then you could do the same thing for the children. And since it's kind of like a little more flexible of a way to destroy entities, it could either just be destroyed from the child or from the, um, or from the actual area entities. I could keep these as area entities. I wouldn't have to worry about it. But I don't know if that's a good idea. Having an entity in two places. Hmm. All right. Let's see if this works. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do the same situation. I need to make the wall boss push me across the line right as he's doing a scanner beam, and it shouldn't crash this time. It's not actually crashing. It's just assert failing. Shouldn't assert fail this time. Is it running? Oh, there it goes. Okay. Let's see what happens. didn't work as though. Alright, we need to make this more easy to hit. Which means the boss just needs to push you a little bit sooner. Or it should take out it take off the exit locking sooner. So you can get across that line. So here. Right now it's a position wise less than 40. We'll make that something like 140. So we can just do this to pretty much any time. Oh, collision systems not even part of this. Area creation and any foo. Yeah, so basically we can continue pushing back entities no matter what. So it pushes it back as, a, as an entity, a child of the area, but it's also a, a name, a child of, the, of its parent, and the parent deletes the entity, and also the area deletes the entity, but both of those have already been deleted. In fact, oh, ants destroy now. Should check the entity right away if it doesn't exist. Just return. So we don't do any of this stuff. We don't try and check its attack or its last pause.
And this already checks entity exists, so we don't need that either. There, that's nice and simple. I kind of like this. This is probably a good check, just to have those couple lines there. Okay, let's make sure it still works. going on Oh no. Not good. Oh, fear boss target, fear boss center, fear boss center must have been deleted. Oh, of course it's deleted. Oh, right. The whole reason I wrote this was basically so. So this. Basically, we would need to comment this out and trust in the in the other system. Yeah, you gotta do it that way. Yeah, this is one of them. Exactly. I'm just going to add a comment here. Okay, this time it shouldn't shouldn't fail. So that works. Um, I do believe. I do believe this is friggin' ready. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and play him one more time. I'm just gonna see how it feels. See if we can fight this boss and go through the whole motions and stuff like that. Um, but then I'm gonna take a break, get some dinner, and think about this whole commit right here. I'm not actually gonna commit this. because this is just so fundamental. I really need to think about that little bit right there, whether it pushes an any back as a, as a child of the area or not. Okay, so let's fight the boss. Let's see if he's fun like this, and hopefully this time he just doesn't do that weird disappearing act thing. Which could have had something to do with 
this code, I guess. I do have lots of health right now. I cheated just to get out of that because I didn't want to die. <laughs> Dang, that sucky thing to get stuck over there. I should make it so you can't get stuck over there. Oh, let's get down to the line. Can we do it? Come on. Oh, it's getting so close. <laughs> yes! Oh, it was so close. Oh, but it killed me because it. Oh! That sucks. <laughs> well, that was fun. Cool. So maybe I'll need to adjust his hit points a little bit. Maybe to give him a, a little bit less hit points so it's not quite so difficult, but. That was pretty good. Let's make sure he, and nothing is broken here. It knocked me back into those spikes. So do you see those spikes there? Those actually damage you. And so I had, I had like only half a tooth worth of health or whatever. And I think a bomb went off and it knocked me over and hit me into those spikes. Uh, let's try it again. But this time I'm just gonna cheat just to make sure just to make sure the whole process works. You can still kill this boss and stuff. In there. Oh my god, still some bugs. Uh, oh, uh, a couple critical bugs with this guy. Oh no. Oh no, this, what's going on here? Shit, now there's another bug? <laughs> Looks like I might be spending my entire night just working on this. I'm supposed to do a release tonight. Oh, well, maybe I can still get it done. These are some big bugs, it seems like. What, what entity is being removed? Oh, it's just removing a component.
What entity is this? There's no way to know at this point. Shazzle. Well, I need to try and catch this, so. Wait, this is being called from an AI's and AI's remove. What's up, Pidlegs? So it would be remove collision. That happens in fire explosion, ice explosion, small explosion, foe. Oh, this is scheduled after the update. So it, I guess it could have removed this entity. Right? Let me think about this. Like it could have gone mode timer is less than 0 0.5, mode one, remove collision. Timer is less than zero, then remove. Somehow this could have got removed and then it's trying to remove its collision, and it already did. Luckily, this would never would be a bug in release mode because this is only an, a debug assertion. But still, I think that's what happened. Something went and deleted this. Hmm. I guess it would be a good thing to check it. Everything that goes parent equals. Uh. Yeah, nice. You went out to breakfast? That sounds yummy. Speaking of breakfast. Okay. Something. What do I do about this? Either I put protection guards into all those calls. Yeah, right on. Yeah, cool, man. See you, Grim Gary. Oh, yeah, it totally is, right? Okay. And, well, I've got a little bit of code written for that. I mean, there'll be something here. So if I do need to catch... Anyways, I'll catch this later, hopefully. Let's, I just wanted to see if this would work. If I could let him push me back to the next area and then kill him. And then I got to get going. Get some dinner. It's dinner time. Okay, so speed up time.
Oh, you know what? One thing. The fear boss. This little bit needs to be correct. Might have been. That might have had something to do with why I was. Why I was crashing. Dinky Donks, cool name. Um, probably just some beans and rice and, you know, stuff like that. Simple stuff. Beans and rice. I eat that pretty much every day. Okay, now that he's in this area, I'm just gonna I'm gonna kill him with debug commands. It's not wait, why is it not working? Oh, it doesn't work. Can't kill him with the debug commands anymore. Oh, Shazzle. Yeah, he's going to be nowhere near dead at this point. Oh well. I'll finish my testing later on tonight and fix these critical bugs. Ah, well, yeah, that's it. Eat steak, yes! I would love that. If I could have some steak to throw in there too, I would. Usually I get some, le like sometimes I'll get some leftovers. My lady will go out or something have a little event with her work and bring home some steak. I'll be like, yeah, put some steak in it. Okay, guys, well, that's it for today's stream. Um, I got packs coming up this weekend, so there's flights to, to be had, and I'll be gone all weekend and stuff. So the next time I'll be streaming will be next, like, Tuesday. So I hope you all have a great weekend and a great week, and um, we'll see you all. see you all next time, next Tuesday.